uh, intention with this kind of intention i believe uh you you have to be well prepared to yourself challenge yourself and uh, share to professor ammar that uh, uh you got better score than professor ammar and uh yeah just uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, uh, bless you to get a uh, better uh, career in the future okay this is kind of challenge yeah and not only uh, finish with uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, sarjana satu or bachelor degree but you also challenge yourself to get master degree uh, doctor like uh, professor amar and also inshallah to be professor in the future and if not in that uh, academic direction you may also think about uh, how to be good manager how to be good entrepreneurship entrepreneur in the future and uh, you may also say, share to Professor Amar later on because you can you have uh, uh, his detail right uh, what do you call it um, email and so forth uh, from Professor Amar and you may also uh, share to Professor Amar I have uh, successful uh, in my career to be a uh, mm, excellent uh, entrepreneur or um, excellent uh, business manager or whatever and then uh, i think with this kind of uh, uh, share information our our silaturahmi with uh, professor amal will be uh, um, much much better not only today but also in the future okay i think uh, professor amar um, uh, well prepared about uh, uh, sharing uh, his uh, powerpoint um, just want to ask uh, mbak ratu can you give uh, authority to Professor Amar to um, share screen and uh, present uh, uh, his uh, PowerPoint? But before that, uh, let me also to add something that uh, today, not only uh, my student, Professor Amar, uh, participating in this uh, uh, excellent or uh, very um, prestigious uh, discussion session, with a very uh, 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 good one, excellent one, uh, presenter, uh, tamu, ya, yeah, uh, dosen tamu, uh, Professor Amar, and also uh, we expect not only uh, Professor Amar talk from the beginning up until end, but we need uh, your active discuss discussion, share your thought, and ask some question to, to him. Uh, besides that, uh, we'll inform you, Professor Amar, that uh, the, the participant is not only our student, but also some uh, senior uh, student, uh, also uh, some uh, lecturers in this uh, university, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. But also, uh, we have also, uh, insyaAllah, yeah, um, guests from United Kingdom, yeah, from, from England, from UK, we also uh, join in this uh, discussion. Okay, um, how many of us are already with us now? But since now uh, we, we promised to everybody that we will start at uh, 7.30, let's start uh, our discussion with uh, uh, the uh, introduction from Professor Amar and then continue uh, with uh, his presentation. Please pay attention and take some note and I believe Professor Amar will, will, uh, uh, will be happy if you want to interrupt Professor Amar. I'm not very clear with your um, explanation in this slide. Uh, you may, I believe, uh, um, interrupt uh, his presentation and Professor Amar will be more than happy to um, to entertain you with uh, some comment from him. And uh, later on, I believe uh, at the end of uh, this session, uh, Professor Amar will also uh, welcome with uh, question and answers. Uh, Professor Amar, you may uh, present your uh, PowerPoint. Please, Pa. Thank you, Pa. Okay, just give me one second, please. Okay. 
you see the PowerPoint? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salamat pagi, everybody there. Uh, thank you, Paiudi, for your invitation. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending today's presentation. Uh, uh, usually, I'm really surprised today, but because Paiudi, usually in every presentation I have and every invitation, he starts by uh, giving me the the Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar, but I don't know why today he did not mention Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar. So this is usually. <laughs> <laughs> I just be careful with that uh, joke, Professor Amar. I don't know whether the situation or condition in, in, in Canada there is different with uh, our condition at this moment. Yeah, um, in the past, I always uh, give a joke yeah, to Professor Amar that uh, his nickname is Amar. Yeah, Amar. And his complete name is Amar Ma'ruf Nahim Munkar. <laughs> okay, that's uh, um, sometimes not, not forget, but I just want to uh, set up uh, this kind of condition with very carefully um, kind of uh, keeping some joke. Okay, Professor, Professor Amar Maruf Rain Mukar, <laughs> we continue <laughs> your discussion. No, no problem. Thank you, Payudi. Um, yes, because I, I miss that joke every time you mention it, every time I have a presentation. So um, thank you for having me in this uh, talk today. Um, let me start my, uh, the, the title of my talk today is Recent Trends in the Industry. But before I start the presentation, let me talk about the agenda we have for, for today. Um, first, I will give you a quick background about myself. Um, I'll talk about the main topic, then I'll choose one area, which is, I chose one area, which is the digital transformation. Then a very specific area related to my uh, research, which is the Internet of Things. Um, I will conclude the presentation with uh, key takeaways, as well as uh, what is going on in terms of uh, the research we're conducting currently. Uh, let me talk about my background um, in a little bit more details in case if you have any specific questions or if you want to uh, inquire about something that I haven't mentioned in my presentation. Um, again, my name is not Amr bin Maruf and Nayan Munkar. My name is Ammar Amir. Um, I'm currently uh, an, an associate professor at Northeastern University in the College of Professional Studies, um, specifically in the Master of Science Project Management Program in Toronto, Canada. Uh, quick information about Northeastern University. Northeastern University is one of the top universities in the US. And it was established in 1898 with the main campus, campus in Boston, USA. And we have several campuses. We call them regional campuses. Um, one that is in Charlotte, North Carolina, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington, Toronto, Canada, and that's where I am located. And also we have Vancouver uh, campus, which is in Canada as well. And this fall, we're starting with a new location in, in Europe, in uh, the city of uh, London. We're starting with project management as well. So uh, Northeastern University in Toronto, we have different programs, but the, the program that I'm working on is, or working in is, is project management. Um, Paiuri already mentioned about my background. I did my, uh, or my, my uh, education background. I did my bachelor's, master's, as well as my PhD in industrial engineering uh, in the University of Tennessee in the USA. Um, I have more than 22 years of work experience in both in industry and acad um, academia as well. I started my career as a consultant. So I had the chance to work as a consultant after my graduation. I consulted with a lot of manufacturing facilities in the US. I worked on different projects and uh, managing projects, uh, supply chain management. I did a lot of simulation modeling. We call it uh, discrete event simulation modeling. Also, um, I, I did a lot of work in terms of the Lean Six Sigma, which is the continuous improvement part of uh, the management um, and data analytics as well. Um, after my, my consulting work, I, I worked in a distribution center in the US for one of the leading companies, which is GAP. 
we had a distribution center, three distribution centers for Gap, Old Navy, and Banana Republic. Um, then I moved to IT industry. After IT industry, I had my own company as an entrepreneur. I understand this, this course is about entrepreneurship. Uh, so I, I was an entrepreneur myself. I had my own company. I worked in procurement. I dealt with uh, tenders with the government, international agencies. Um, afterward, I decided to go back to academia. So I taught at uh, the university. Um, I worked in the US, then I, I moved to Yemen and that's where I'm originally from. Then I had the chance and the opportunity to also work in Indonesia. That was in 2016, and that's when I met uh, uh, Payudi. Uh, 2016, I joined uh, the uh, Sampurna University, uh, and I worked in Indonesia for four years, and I had the chance to, again, be in the industrial engineering department. I worked as also the, the dean of the College of Engineering there. It was four beautiful years of my life and enjoyed being there. So that is about myself. So if you feel like asking questions about my background, my experience, if you want to know anything that I did not cover, cover in the presentation, please feel free to ask me uh, toward the end when I'm done. <clears throat> so when Paiudi contacted me about uh, this talk, usually I get nervous when Paiudi contacted me, contact me because usually when he does, he it's either requesting me to do uh, a Friday prayer khutbah or uh, Ramadan talk. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to do a football here from Canada. But uh, so he said, you have a class and he want, uh, he want me to be a guest. So I thought, what, what is the topic that I should be talking about in the class? Um, so I thought maybe something that is relative, something that is related to what you're studying. Uh, because you're, you're in the business school, you're, you're studying business and economics, and you're talking about entrepreneurship. So I thought maybe I'll talk about the trends in, in industry. When I talk about the trends in industry, I'm talking about not, not the, the manufacturing by itself, but I'm talking about the industry, the business organization in general. So I wanted to know, um, or I wanted to share with you what is happening in terms of the digital transformation. Uh, what is happening before, during, and after the COVID-19 disruption? So what is happening in, in the global market? So this is a perspective I want to share with you. So the first question that you might want to ask, so why should I care? <clears throat> why, why should I listen to the presentation about digital transformation? Why do I care about the trend? Um, in, in, in the business or in the industry? Well, um, everybody should care because what is happening around us nowadays is, is impacting our daily life. Um, everything is changing fast. So it's going to change how we teach as, as professors. It's going to change. Uh, the, the, it's going to impact the way how, how we work in the future. It's going to change uh, the way we search for job and the type of jobs that we get. So I think we should be abreast. We should be as business leaders and entrepreneurs, you should be uh, up to date in terms of what is happening in the global market and what are the trends lately. Why? Because you don't want to be left behind. Um, uh, speaking about myself, I, I, I saw a lot of people talking about uh, digitalization, IoT, and, and my domain is supply chain. My domain is continuous improvement business. So I wanted to know what is happening. So I started doing research and the more research you do and the more questions you ask, the more you know and the more knowledge that you gain and the more appetite that you have for, for knowing more. So I think it's very important for you as, as uh, I'm assuming the majority of the audience here, our students are, are in, in business school. So again, as, as future leaders, as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, you should know about what's happening in the market. What are the trends? Why? Because you want to know um, that competition, uh, competition and sustainability, it is must that you are innovative as, as a, an entrepreneur. <clears throat> and that innovation doesn't come from um, nothing. I mean, you have, you have to have that knowledge. You have to be up to date of what is happening. So that, that's why we should care about what is happening. <clears throat> and we should also learn from the history. And I wanted to start with this slide over here. So the question I have is, what do we learn from history by looking at this slide? I mean, there are things here, maybe some of you um, are not familiar with, but I know myself and Paiudi, we know everything that is here because we're old enough and, and we know uh, and we've experienced most of the products. So the question is, what is the trend? <clears throat> what is happening to the products in the market over here? So if you look at the first 
um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you look at the first line over here, you're talking about the storage uh, media or storage devices. We went from floppy disk, if you remember old days, the maximum storage was like 1.44 megabytes, which is nothing nowadays. Um, so we moved to zip drive, then floppy, then flash disk. Then now it's going to the cloud. <laughs> you have the Google Drive, you have different uh, storage online that you can use to store your files. Uh, film industry, <clears throat> movie industry, VHS, if, if um, again, I don't know if you remember, but that, this is how we used to watch uh, movies. Then we moved to higher quality in terms of DVDs. Now what's happening? You're talking about Netflix and, and movies being streamed online. The same thing with the music industry, more grabbed than uh, cassettes, uh, tape player, Walkman. Uh, now we're going to uh, the cloud. Most of the music is it's either you subscribe, you download. So what is happening um, um, in, in terms of the products over here? We see that a lot of the products, a lot of what's, hap what's happening in the market, it's going to the digital form. And that's why we're talking about the digitalization um, okay. of the market. So all of this is a picture or a manif manifestation of the digital transformation that is happening now. I'm not saying that all products are going to go, uh, are going to be digital, um, are, are moving to the digital uh, domain, but this is what's happening. This is what we see nowadays. So that's why it's important for us to understand what is happening. Uh, what, what What is driving all of this? Is it the COVID-19? Is it the disruption? Well, the answer, this, this movement has been going on for a uh, long time, but there are some factors that are driving the, the digital transformation. So this is happening before the COVID-19. And the, the main driver is the Industry 4.0. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard about Industry 4.0. I know when I was in Indonesia, uh, there was um, a strategic plan from uh, the government and President Jokowi, which is moving Indonesia to, or making Indonesia 4.0 by 2025. So there is a lot of uh, movement, not only in Indonesia, but globally. So as I said, this is happening way before the COVID-19. Uh, and if you go back in history, you're talking about different industry revolutions. You're talking about the industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. And now we're talking about 4.0. And each era or each industrial revolution here is driven by factors. So here we're talking about mechanization. Here you're talking about electricity. Here you're talking about automation and computers. And here you're talking about the, the technology and the internet uh, and what is happening in terms of the advancement of technology. Um, so what are the main components of uh, digital transformation, or if we say the industry 4.0? There are different technologies. Um, there are things such as um, IIoT, they call it the industrial internet of things, or the internet of things. I'll, I'll, I'll speak more about this part here, uh, and, and because it's related to what I'm doing. Um, you're, you're, there's another te technology, I'm sure you've heard of it, which is the augmented reality. There is the additive, let me move the photos a little bit, uh, additive manufacturing, then you're talking about the cloud, cybersecurity, um, a big area as an entrepreneur and business student you need to know about, which is the big data and, and analytics, the massive amount of data that is being generated now. How do we deal with that? Because of the advancement in technology, of course, you're talking about autonomous robots, and I'll give you some examples um, <clears throat> from that perspective. Simulation. We're talking about the, the digital twin now in the Industry 4.0, which is how can we uh, simulate what is happening on the computer to make what-if analysis before we change anything on, on reality. So simulation is not new. It's been there for a long time, but now we're talking about real-time simulation. <clears throat> and of course, the horizontal and vertical system integration, which is looking at the entire system, not on bits and pieces. So these are the technologies that are driving um, the Industry 4.0 and driving the digital transformation um, in, in today's uh, global market. So <clears throat> that, is, that is what is happening before the COVID-19. The question is, what about COVID-19? Did it 
do any impact? Was there any impact to uh, the digital trans tra transformation and what is happening? Um, let me, I'm just trying to change the picture over here. So the COVID-19, based on a study by McKenzie and company, it has actually impacted the uh, digital transformation in the terms of accelerating, making it faster. And I, I guess all of us can relate to this uh, after a year and, and some uh, more than one year of the COVID-19, we, we've seen a lot of movement toward digitalization. And this is supported by the survey here that says, uh, in just a few months time, the COVID-19 crisis has brought about years of change in the way companies in all sectors and regions do business. Um, no, nobody expected that we will be teaching from home. Uh, nobody expected that we will be working from home. But all of that is accelerating the digital transformation. <clears throat> And the survey is saying that organizations are already making digital transformation uh, investments. And most of these changes, which is very interesting, it's gonna stay. It's gonna last for a long time. And I'll, I'll just put some data here from the survey. And I think this is very interesting because it doesn't only highlight uh, the states and the worst, but also it talks about Asia. And believe it or not, according to the survey, um, Asia, the acceleration is faster than Europe and North America. And that's actually what I experienced when I was in Indonesia. So when I was in Indonesia, I, I felt the digital transformation. I mean, when you talk about simple things like Gojek, uh, Bukalapak, uh, how, how we order things, how we deliver things, uh, how we deal with money. It's, it's in some cases, it's better than here in Canada, I can, I can tell. So I'm not surprised to see the data here that the Asia Pacific, um, acceleration in terms of the digital transformation has been impacted by the COVID-19. Um, also in terms of the effect of COVID-19 on organizations. So I wanna put something into perspective. Um, <clears throat> what, is, what is happening? What is happening to businesses now? What is happening to companies during the COVID-19? So we talked about before the COVID-19 and 4.0, and how it is driving the digital transformation. And also we talked about COVID, what is happening. And we said it is accelerating the digital transformation. But we wanna see how companies reacted uh, to the market and to the crisis and to the disruption of COVID-19. Um, so it depends on the product type. So you have companies where their product could be digital or it could be physical. When we mean Digital, it could be something that you can download, such as Netflix. You go and download movies or music, uh, or sometimes I know um, you can download games as well. So it's not tangible. On the other hand, when you talk about physical products, you're talking about things that you uh, buy physically. <clears throat> so because, because of the COVID-19, these organizations, they have to adapt. Um, and they had to change the product delivery. So a company that is digital, they, they did not need to change the business model. So they stayed with their full digital uh, product delivery. What happened to them in terms of change response? They sustained and the impact is they prospered. Why? Because they took advantage of what the business model they already have. The problem here is with the physical products. So some organizations, they were actually before COVID fully digital. Some organizations, they were partly digital organizations, um, they were not digital, but possible to digitalize. And some uh, organizations, it's very difficult to digitalize. So let me give you an example, for example. Fully digital would be a company like um, Amazon, for example. They were Their business model was all online. They don't need to have an online presence. They, they were present there. Partially digital would be companies such as um, uh, Walmart, for example, they have they have supermarkets. At the same time, they have online presence. Companies or organizations that they did not have online presence. And a good example about this, I can think of universities, for example. I know I can talk about some important university because we did not have online courses, but because of the COVID-19, we, and not only us, I mean, a lot of universities, they try to be innovative in terms of it is possible to, to, to digitalize that product or service. 
And the industry over here or organizations where it's difficult to digitalize or change their product delivery to, to a digital uh, 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 mode, it would be industries such as uh, tourism, like hotels, um, airplane, uh, or like aviation industry. These type of organizations, they have to have face-to-face. -face. They have to have physical. I mean, I have to go to the hotel to, to enjoy the service. I have to travel. Even though some organizations, they were very creative, like the aviation industry or the airline industry, they converted some of their airplanes to be cargo. Uh, but in general, it's, it's difficult to, to digitalize. So what is the impact? Again, so here we sustain, sustain those who partially, they increase their digital presence. Uh, presence. Uh, those who were possible to digitalize, they were innovative by changing the product delivery from physical to online. And the impact is they thrived, they sustained. The problem is with those who did not or were not innovative, they stagnate, they stayed where they are and they struggled and they went out of business. Same thing for this category over here. It's either they, they mitigate, they try to reduce the cost. Some of them, they're still in business and and we heard about some airline industries that are going out of business, some of hotels going out of business in the tourism industry. Um, but you still have some that they're still enduring. They're still trying to survive. All of this, um, I'm trying to make a point over here. So what you see in terms of what, it, what is happening here, especially in this area, it's happening because of what? Every change requires that organization to be agile, which is the agility, innovation, and also innovation. And it's very important in terms of entrepreneurship. I mean, if you don't have that mindset of uh, entrepreneurship um, and, and digital innovation management and being innovative, you cannot go from this part to this part and stay in business. So that is very important. Um, and in terms of... <clears throat> Um, uh, entrepreneurship in public organizations, and I know this is related to one of the courses that you take, uh, we're saying that task-oriented relations um, or relations-oriented and change, I, I think what I want to focus in, on is the change-oriented leadership is very important. <clears throat> so being innovative, being entrepreneur, um, being flexible is very important in situations like uh, the situation that we went through, and if you want to be very competitive and especially in terms of the digital transformation, okay? So that is before, during COVID. Question also, what is gonna happen after the COVID? According to the survey of McKenzie that the, the digital transformation after the COVID-19, it is most likely to stick through the recovery. So according to the uh, survey over here, if you read the numbers, I know we have a lot of numbers over here, but this is telling us that, that they believe that the change will stick. So 60%, for example, here say that changing customer needs or expectations will stay. Um, let me see one thing here that is about um, remote working, for example. So it talks about increasing migration of assets to the cloud, um, increasing customer demand purchasing. Um, here, increased use of advanced technology, um, uh, qualification of additional resource. So what this is telling us that there's a big chance of what is happening during the COVID-19 in terms of the digital transformation will stick there, will stay. And some of them believe that it will increase also after the COVID-19. And I, I believe that is that is where we're going. So that is that is in terms of digital transformation before um, COVID, during and after the COVID-19. So if I wanted to ask, <clears throat> what are the factors that impact this digital transformation? Um, is there anything that going to um, impact organization to move toward, toward the digital transformation. So I did the research um, and the title of the research is in the bottom of the slide over here, <clears throat> which is dis uh, digitaliz digitalization of the supply chain uh, transformation factors. It's one of the papers that were just published in 2021. So I wanted to know what are the factors impacting the digitalization uh, or the digital transformation? I classified them into different themes. Um, Technology, people, as well as processes. 
Um, in terms of technology, so I'm going to focus on the highest percentage. So number one, in terms of digital transformation factors, I, IT infrastructure, which is clear. I mean, you have to have the infrastructure for you to be able to uh, be able to deliver that product uh, digitally or to move the organization for the digital transformation. Um, another factor is we're talking about in terms of the supply chain, and it could be in, in any organization, which is the looking at the system perspective or the integrated supply chain. Uh, you have other factors like uh, the things that we mentioned in terms of the processes, which is the digit digitalization and innovation strategy. But what I want to focus on, which is almost 16%, is the digitalization in terms of rescaling and upscaling. Um, moving toward the digitalization, we need to rescale or upscale our employees. Uh, we need to bridge the gap between universities and industries. Uh, we want to make sure that we graduate students or we want to make sure that our employees are up to, to scale in terms of uh, the digital skills that we need uh, to move toward the, the digital uh, business or the uh, digital or the di digitalization of our uh, uh, daily business, supply chain, whatever it is, okay? So of course we have other factors, but I wanted to focus only on the, the major factors in terms of what is gonna impact us moving toward the digitalization area. Um, to be more specific, I wanted to pick one area and see in, in terms of the digital transformation, what can this new technology, what can uh, these new tools uh, do to help us in terms of um, our daily operations and, and our daily work. So I picked one topic, which is related to what I'm doing in terms of research. And hopefully you can relate to this because um, I, I chose IoT, which is one of the technologies of the Industry 4.0, uh, because it's very important, not only in the supply chain, but it's applicable in, in different areas. And we'll talk about that. But let me start by talking about one of the research that I did, um, which is related to the digital transformation, which is about the food supply chain and why is it important? So when you talk about the food supply chain, you're talking about um, the process that en encompasses farmers, producers, processors, manufacturers. So it's all the way the, 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 the value chain of moving the product from the mar market, I mean, from the farm, all the way until we get it to either kitchen or the restaurant. We call this the value, ch value chain. Uh, the, the value chain, and we call it or the supply chain, um, how we manage it is very important. Um, and why is, it, why is it that we're talking about the food supply chain? Because the food supply chain is very complex. Um, especially when you talk about food, you're talking about safety, you're talking about quality, you're talking about waste. So for FSC means the food supply chain, it has inherent challenging characteristics of perishability. So food can go bad easily. If you're talking about strawberry, for example, if you're talking about um, other products like tomatoes. Uh, and also if you talk about the cold supply chain, such as fish or other products, it's, it's very difficult to manage that. And, and you're talking about, you need to have speed, you need to have data. <clears throat> so that's why it's important to, to talk about the food supply chain. Why? Also, we talk about the food supply chain because of something known as the <clears throat> food loss and waste. There's a lot of food loss and, and, and waste and because of different factors. So for example, I collected some data here. 14% of the world food production is lost before reaching retailers, which is a lot of waste. In uh, 2019, more than 600 or uh, 619 million people, which is 8.9% of the world population, did not have um, access to food. So there's imbalance. Some countries, they have access to food, more food. Other countries, they don't. Um, a total of 2 billion of people faced severe or moderate forward insecurity. Um, and all of this is driven by some factors in the food supply chain. Number one, food supply chain, inadequate processing and packaging. The way we package, the way we process the food from the farm all the way to the retailer or the customer needs to be uh, revisited. Um, uh, lack of transportation. 
and distribution system, insufficient storage facilities and techniques. So the question is, how can we take this new technology to help us minimize the, the food loss and waste? How can we uh, leverage on that technology? Some more data. So according to the US, um, I mean, the, one, some of the reasons for the food loss, which is I highlighted over here, is the limited data and information. We don't have enough data um, when we need the data. The data, sometimes it's available, but retrieving the data when we need the data is not there. Because if we have if you have access to the data when we need it, it would be easier to have reactive uh, or uh, proactive uh, correction actions to to move toward minimizing the food loss, um, according to research also. So data and availability is and consistency is is a big issue, um, and it's promising that to use the uh, IoT in in the food supply chain because we want to have that transparency. We want to have that data collection. We want to be able to see what is happening from the minute that we take that food from the farm all the way until we get it to the restaurant or the kitchen or wherever it's going to go eventually. Um, because we don't want that food to be exposed to uh, quality issues, to safety issues, to risk issues. So that is one of the areas we're talking about in terms of how this new technology, how this uh, digitalization can help us in improving and reducing some of the losses that we see over here. <clears throat> so let me share with you in terms of the Internet of Things. And before we talk about the application of Internet of Things, we need to understand what we mean by Internet of Things. <clears throat> so Internet of Things, uh, I mean, you can tell from the name itself, it's Internet and Things, <clears throat> uh, which is connecting the things with the Internet in, in simple English. Um, but formal definition is <clears throat> IoT is defined as a set of digitally connected physical objects for sensing and monitoring. So basically you have, let's say a container, a machine, a box, and you put a sensor, uh, a tag on that box. That sensor is connected to the internet and, and, and that data is transferred from information or transfer information from this physical object to the internet. And once I have that data in the cloud, which is what you see over here, I can do some analytics and predictive analysis like optimization methods, some statistical analysis, and I can display it on the user interface to make decision before things happen. So that is what IoT. In other words, you have sensors on the device and you connect them to physical objects. So what is, what is happening? What are the recent trends in the industry in terms of IoT? So I wanna share a couple of things with you, some examples. Hopefully this is gonna be interesting than just listening to me. <clears throat> one of the, one of the um, trend we see happening is the use of drones. Um, it's very interesting to see that being used in supply in the food supply chain. I brought some applications over here. You can see some of the drones. They've been used in terms of irrigation, in terms of uh, fertilizing the, the plants. And, and this is one of the applications that's coming from this company. It's called Drone Deploy. What you see on the left side here is basically an image of a field. <clears throat> I don't know if you can read the slide from here, but this is about plant and, and the crop is wheat. So by taking an image about this field, they can count, of course, approximately how many plants of wheat do we have in this area. So you can see some of the statistics over here. So I can read that there's like 13.4 million um, plants of, of wheat. Um, a plotting rate, <clears throat> what is the, the health of the plants over here? So it gives you very precise um, data. <clears throat> Also, you're, you're talking about um, detecting if there's any issues. Uh, here we talk about uh, parasites or fungi for, for the plants. So by, take, by, by taking the drone and taking images, <clears throat> and of course, these images are going to go to the internet, to the cloud, through cameras, through sensors, and being processed. So that is one of, one of the applications, and we call it the pre-harvest IoT application. Another interesting application in terms of transparency <clears throat> and data 
we call it post harvest. What is happening after we pick uh, the, the vegetables or fruits from, uh, from the farm. There's, there's new technology. This is one of the company, it's called Zest Fresh. I have a video I'm gonna play for you for three minutes. It's, it's interesting. It talks about condition-based monitoring. So now we have a visibility of what is happening from the minute we pick that vegetable or that fruit from the farm all the way until we get to wherever it's going. I have data, I have condition monitoring base. So let me play the video to show you some of um, the applications here. Over 30% of America's harvested food is thrown away. This equates to a staggering annual loss of $161 billion with inconsistent quality being the leading contributor to waste. But losses don't have to be accepted as the cost of doing business. Say hello to Zest Fresh. Today, the industry is limited to visual quality inspections and lacks quantitative data to measure actual remaining freshness. In fact, the fresh food industry does not have a fresh metric by which to reflect the remaining shelf life of perishable food. This lack of actual freshness visibility has led to the false assumption that all product harvested on the same day has the same days of remaining freshness. Best used by dates are printed based on the date of harvest and assume consistent and proper handling throughout the process and distribution. But in reality, multiple factors affect freshness. Impacts like the amount of time pallets spend in the field can affect product shelf life by as much as three days. Differences in pre-cool temperatures and other handling variations also impact the product. As a result, pallets harvested from the same field on the same day can end up with shelf lives that differ as much as a week. Here's the problem. When pallets travel through a multi-echelon distribution system, directions are made at each node without knowledge of the actual remaining shelf life of each pallet. ZestFresh uses IoT-enabled sensors to monitor time and temperature at the pallet level throughout the entire supply chain. Real-time data is used in combination with product and field information to calculate a freshness metric referred to as the Zest Intelligent Pallet Routing Code, or Zipper Code. Data is analyzed in the Zest Cloud, where an algorithm determines the actual measured freshness and delivers preemptive alerts with prescriptive corrective actions, such as intelligently routing products with the least remaining freshness to the nearest locations, and products with more remaining freshness to more distant locations. Zest Fresh Intelligent Routing takes into account the natural differences in freshness and processing variances that have impacted pallets, matching distribution transit times with the actual freshness. I use Zest uh, via dashboard. It gives me access to temperatures on the pallets when it's picked, when it's transported, when it's cooled. It's real-time information that's converted to reports that helps us better manage our operation on our end. If something's taking too long, we get an alert that we can take action right away. This will really help rejection rates and determine where to send the fruit. You button up on your operations to where you can reduce costs and loss of product. Zest has become a really good tool to use and it's become my go-to for answers on freshness. With Zest Fresh, products' remaining days of freshness consistently meet or exceed quality requirements, which reduces waste for retailers, restaurants, and consumers. It's profitable for the growers and retailers. It improves customer satisfaction by providing consistent quality produce. It drives trust and loyalty with the consumer. It improves. Um, I, I guess we got the idea. Um, so this is the power of having data when we need the data. Um, and we call it real-time data. Now I'm, I'm able to track what is happening. I'm able to make corrective actions. I want you to think about this technology, not only in the farm and the supply chain management, but also to think about it, how you can apply it in your daily uh, operations and wherever you work. This is very important. We can apply this technology in, in project management, we can apply it in our universities, wherever that is. 
So that is one of the example for the IoT application, which I, I personally like. And I'll talk about the research that we're doing, which is related to something similar to the metric here. We, they call it the freshness metric. Um, another uh, example, let me just move to the next slide. <laughs> Um, moves food safety by providing complete track and tra okay sorry um the second or the third example in terms of iot we're talking about processing distribution and consumer <clears throat> i want you to see what is happening in terms of we call it the smart processing oh, it's it's um, oh. uh, it's smart processing warehouse and distribution using advanced automation this is one of the distribution centers, and it's in Okado Group. And also, we have something similar here in Canada for one of the supermarkets. They call it uh, Sobeys. I want you to see the technology that they use in terms of picking and sorting uh, and, and um, fulfilling orders for customers. So, let's watch this quick video. So there's, there's no narration, but there is music. These are robots. Um, and what you see underneath the robots are baskets filled with uh, products like uh, juice. <clears throat> you see the robots move around in a grid system. They're operated by battery. So they go to every box and they pick the crates. We used to do this manually where I used to work with four clicks. So this is how the system, they have battery, they charge the battery and they keep moving with the different speed. Uh, they go pick the crates and they will show in a minute how they go to uh, a sorting station here. So they take item by item either robot or manually, they have operators also. Okay. And they can also refill in the passage, you see the water, the juice and things like that. Okay, so this is because of the technology we're able to <clears throat> fulfill orders, to place order online, uh, we're able to um, have more transparency and optimize the processes that we have. Um, and this is all because of technology such as IoT and of course, artificial intelligence and machine learning. The next one. So uh, that's some of the applications that I wanted to show you in terms of what is being used in, in IoT. Um, I did the research in terms of defining what are the key challenges um, facing IoT adoption in, in the food supply chain. And this is one of the papers that we we published. I don't know why the slide keeps coming back, so just give me one truth. Sorry about that, let me fix this. Okay, so again, this is the paper we just published. Um, I, I have two of my students from St. Paul University on this publication. It's in Benchmarking and International Journal. And we talked about the factors impacting the adoption of IoT, uh, similar to the digitalization that we talked about. And what we found that the three top challenges similar to the digital transformation is number one is technical, then financial, financial, which is the investment that you have to invest um, in terms of IoT adoption, as well as operational. And I've listed all the, the sub factors over here. If you are interested in knowing more about the factors, you can refer to our publication just for the sake of time. Um, so to conclude this presentation, what are the, the key takeaways from, from what, what I just presented in terms of digital transformation and why should we care and why is it important? Um, number one, a digital transformation will impact most of the organizational level. So it doesn't matter where you work, uh, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are working in the private, public sector, universities, wherever you are, it's going to impact um, one way or another. Um, it's interesting to read this, and this is where the impact is coming from. Um, it's not pessimistic, it's actually optimistic. I'll look at it from an optimistic perspective. According to the World Economic Forum uh, 2020 report, they estimated that by 2025, 85 million jobs may be displaced by a shift in the division of labor. 
between humans and machines. So we, we saw the robots, the IoT. But the positive thing is new jobs will be created. We're talking about 97 million new roles may emerge that uh, more adapted to the new division of labor between humans and machines. Whether we agree or disagree with the numbers, whether they, they're correct or, or not correct, um, I believe there's, there's, there's a shift in terms of what new jobs will emerge and um, what's gonna happen to some of the old jobs. And, and we've learned this from history. Some of the jobs that we used to have, they, they don't exist anymore. Because of that, and this is something that we mentioned earlier, it's very important to think about rescaling and upscaling digital capabilities. And I, I borrowed some quotation here from some of the recent publications. This is from the Quality Progress for the American Society of Quality. It says that employees must be familiar with and comfortable using a variety of digital technologies and evaluation metrics. So it doesn't say that you have to be an expert. It says that you have to be familiar with and comfortable. So maybe some of the students are sitting now and say, oh, so I need to learn artificial intelligence. I need to learn IoT. I need to, no, <clears throat> I need to learn coding. You just need to be familiar um, with, with what's happening in the industry. You need to be to understand, to be able to talk the language. And, and perhaps maybe you need to um, upskill your skills. So it's not going to hurt if you take um, a course in machine learning, artificial intelligence, coding. You don't have to be an expert. I, I don't do coding either, but I do research and trying to understand what is happening. Um, I can hire somebody from IT to do the application for me, but I can give the idea of where I can apply this technology in my daily work. So that is very important in terms of uh, rescaling or upskilling. Um, I, I think also <clears throat> we need to exploit the current momentum because of the disruption and the digital transformation in terms of uh, the knowledge models now we have. Now we can attend a lot of webinars, a lot of seminars for free, which is very interesting, I think. Um, <clears throat> Last point, which is important, and this is related to you. Um, we need to focus on agility, innovation, entrepreneurship, and digital innovation. I cannot have that switch of digital transformation and managing digital transformation without having the innovation and the entrepreneurship mindset. So that is that is very important in terms of um, what is happening in the industry nowadays. <coughs> Excuse me. That is in terms of the key takeaways. Um, and I want to just share with you what is happening right now. Interesting that I'm still collaborating with some of my former students um, and some of my former colleagues. What we're trying to do based on the research that we just published for the factors impacting the digital transformation and the IoT uh, uh, application, we found that one of the main factors contributing to not implementing IoT is the cost. So right now we're trying to design a low cost and small portable device to be able to do something similar to what you saw with the strawberry, which is the Zist Lab that's going from the farm all the way to the end um, user or customer. So I'm working with uh, Pathically, um, Ifadilla, Sylvia, my former students. Uh, we're, we're conducting the research right now. We are in the final stage of designing the device. We are in the testing phase. In fact, they have a meeting with them in two days to, to go over this. So in case if you want to connect with them, I put their LinkedIn. Um, I published with them uh, two papers. This is if at the last, you just published a, a paper also in the Internet of Things for the, the warehouse. Uh, Silenka, she's not here. Sahara, she's also... Um, uh, we, published another paper also another one that we just published in terms of the, the research so uh, the, the point is that we it, it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter matter which field you are in uh, digital transformation is is going to impact what we do and we need to keep abreast and be updated of what is happening nowadays uh, that concludes my uh, presentation i'm sorry for taking so long I think I spent about an hour uh, talking. So, Fayudi, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Amar. And uh, I believe everybody already, already taken note. Uh, some important <laughs> matters, some important matters in this uh, presentation. And uh, let's see. Um, 
Yeah, I think everybody already open your mind, open your heart, open your thought and, and others about uh, uh, being entrepreneur. It's only, not only about, uh, say, um, Indomaret, yeah? Gojek and others, but now you already got advanced uh, issues, uh, worldwide uh, uh, issues in business and uh, in particular in this uh, industrial in engineering. And I believe uh, uh, many of you will, will ask some important questions and uh, uh, Prof. Amar will be more than happy to respond to the question. But the uh, thing that we have to take a note here, Prof. Or, Prof. Amar already opened your mind, yeah? Open your uh, view about uh, having an uh, international uh, point of view about uh, uh, his issue in his presentation. That's why um, with this kind of everybody, yeah, the student here, uh, to be young muda, young mendunia, yeah, as you, as young people and uh, being a. Uh, 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 active actor in the world. So um, it's time also for you uh, to get a more clear uh, explanation from Professor Amar later on. But as I said before, yeah, Prof. Amar and uh, student and all the participants of this uh, discussion that we have a uh, uh, guest from UK, uh, Embarika Mustafa, probably he will also ask some question or uh, saying something, and we also have a uh, director of uh, EPIF, uh, Pak Dimas, and other lecturers. We also ask, uh, hopefully, ask uh, per, uh, questions uh, to Professor Ahmad. And uh, yeah, from the beginning, um, you already take a note that uh, uh, we, uh, Professor Ahmad, uh, shared that we have to catch up. Uh, the uh, current industry and especially what happened the industry 4.1, uh, 4.0, yeah, <laughs> later on 4.1. <laughs> but uh, the trend technology is also shared uh, from the jadul, yeah, zaman dulu, the old uh, technology up until the current technology that probably uh, everybody already uh, uh, I enjoy the current technology and what is uh, the current technology change your life. And also talking about COVID-19, about transformation, food supply change, dealing with the wasting thing using drone. Yeah, you can see that drone will affect uh, to the uh, uh, life of uh, agriculture that uh, also probably uh, affect to um, your business later on, 80 million jobs replaced by uh, machine, yeah. And lastly, that uh, you already got from Professor Amar is three articles, yeah. I will challenge you, read or not read the three articles. If you can read it, uh, I promise myself to get a better score, yeah, for you. And now, Time for you to ask question. Anyone want to ask question? I will challenge uh, from uh, uh, the student here. Ano, Ano, are you there? Ano. Uh, I know, sir. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm yeah. here. Yes. Question from you to Prof. Amar. You uh, may ask in English or in uh, Arabic. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the time, sir. Uh, thank you for Professor Amar. It was a good presentation uh, for my knowledge. Uh, but I still have a questions about the digital transformations. Uh, Indonesia was lived in the, I mean, like manual transformation. If I if I can say that, we live about the, everything's about manual. Even the administration is doing with the manual things. But uh, I want to ask something. 
what is most weakness if now the digital transformation is running our world, changing our life, but and then we live with the robotic system, internet system, but we live uh, the manual system, but the manual system is works, uh, maybe it could have a benefit and then we change to the digital transformation. So what is the most weakness, sir, uh, that makes us maybe lazy or something cut everything easier? Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Um, I, I don't want you to get the impression that everybody or every organization in the Western world, whether it is the States, Canada, or Europe, that they are running with robots, they're, they're going with IOTs. Uh, we still have manual operations in Canada, the US, everywhere in the world. Um, <clears throat> in fact, you still have some organizations, they're, they're still in industry 1.0. Um, but the question is, and I know that you asked about Indonesia. Indonesia, I know I, I lived in Indonesia for four years. And I said this earlier, you, you have some organizations that they are way advanced in terms of implementing the digital transformation, but you still have the majority still in, in um, if you will, manual operations, uh, still way behind in terms of digital transformation. But, but the question is, where do you want to be in terms of competition? Uh, there's nothing wrong with you staying with manual operations, but if, if you want to compete, and it depends on which market you are in, um, if you don't keep up with the technology, if you don't optimize the operations, if you don't optimize how you do your work in terms of being efficient, in terms of reducing the cost, in terms of uh, satisfying the customer, now what's going to happen? You're going to be out of, out of competition. So that's why a lot of organizations are trying to uh, rush into digital transformation because they want to be ahead of the competition. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have organizations still in, in manual mode. Yes, we still have that in Canada. We still have it in the USA. We still have it in a lot of parts of the world. But again, it depends on the market. It depends on the organization that you're working in. And, and where do you want to set yourself into, in terms of the competition? So if you, if you ask me about companies, for example, like uh, Apple and Samsung, both of them, they have to compete. They have to be innovative. You talk, if you talk about companies like Amazon and Alibaba, they have to compete. Otherwise, one of them is going to be out of the competition. But if you talk about companies, uh, I don't know some of the companies, maybe in Indonesia, if you're doing Nasi Goreng, if you're working on something else, you're still going to do manual things. So... Again, it depends on, on the market, on the organization, and, and where do you want to be in terms of competition. But, and that's what I said earlier. Don't have that impression that all products are going to go digital. This is what's happening in the market. This is why even in Indonesia, as I told you earlier, the president uh, released in April of 2020, if I'm not mistaken, or 2019. I forgot the exact date the strategic plan for Indonesia moving toward uh, making Indonesia 4.0, because there's an amb ambition. There is, there is a sense of the importance of the digital transformation. Whether we're gonna be there or not, that's another question. It's still gonna take time. It might take Indonesia longer than other countries. It might take long, uh, faster than other countries. So there's no danger. The only danger is the competition and the organization and the market that you're in. I hope that addressed your, your question. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Amar. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I know. Um, others, if you want to ask question, please free, yeah? feel free to ask question. If you want to um, ask in Bahasa Indonesia, yeah, pa Amar, yeah, Prof. Amar. Or, or in Arabic. <laughs> or in Arabic, yeah. Arabic certainly, um, um, he's expert in uh, Arabic, but also, in France, if uh, any possibility to ask in France is also welcome. <laughs> but if uh, any question in Bahasa Indonesia, but firstly, certainly try your best to ask in yes. in English, yeah. But uh, uh, Rafiano or Arno will 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 translate it into into English, yeah. Arno, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Question. Hello, Mr. Captain. Captain, where is the captain? Captain the of captain? this bus. Who is the captain, Pa? 
<laughs> we have a kepala ketua kelas or chairman of this uh, class ya. Yeah. Um, uh, normally he manages all uh, the event of this uh, 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 class activities. I see. Okay. Or dia, dia, you want to have a question, dia? <clears throat> uh, this is uh, almost night time, Prof. Amar. Everybody sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if, if they if they want to ask in in Bahasa Indonesia, but no problem, they can. I mean, somebody can uh, translate. If they don't have any question, um, they have my email address. Uh, they can uh, send me an email. No problem. Um, hi, it's Imbarika uh, from uh, UK. So uh, I can speak Arabic, I can speak English, but it's up to you guys. Uh, which language should I speak with you? <laughs> so originally I'm, from, yeah, originally I'm Egyptian, but just uh, now uh, I live okay. and uh, work in UK. I see. Okay, so maybe we, we speak in English so everybody can understand, yeah? Yeah, okay. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amar, for uh, your presentation. Um, you know, like, because of COVID-19 and everything, so this is the main concern. And uh, you mentioned the first of your presentation that um, COVID-19 actually um, uh, did, like, increase the investment in the digital um, industry. So, um, yeah, I can see that we use the, now it's everything is online. Um, there's too much data, like transformation between different countries. Now we, we work from home, but how can that increase that investment in your opinion and how this will last, like for how long? Thank you very much. How, how do you pronounce your first name in Arabic? Um, some some people they call it Barka, but in Egypt we call it Embarika. Embarika. Yeah. Interesting. It's it's a unique name. Nice. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> it's quite old name. Yeah, you know, like in in some countries in Morocco and Algeria, so they have that name exactly That's like Embarka, uh, Mubarka. Parka. Uh, even when I met anyone from Algeria or Morocco and I say, oh yeah, but this is a very old name. I saw that I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, interesting. So uh, thank you so much for the, the question that you, you just asked. Um, let me start. Um, I mean, you have, you have two parts to the question. Number one is how long it's going to take, right, for, for this investment. And um, the first part is about the digitalization. How come they are investing? So a lot of organizations, um, what, what I mentioned at the beginning in terms of the acceleration of the digital transformation has been uh, impacted by the COVID-19 because what we saw that a lot of organizations, they tried to change their business models. So um, yes, like you said, you worked from home. Um, if you asked your, your boss before, if I asked my, Payuri was my boss, by the way, before I came to Canada. So if I asked Payuri, hey, I'm gonna be working from home, uh, he would have said, no, it's not acceptable. But now people are changing the paradigm of accepting new innovative ways of working from home, of uh, changing the business model. A lot of businesses that they used to have, for example, restaurant industry, um, they, they changed a lot of their uh, business model in terms of offering home delivery, even if they did not do it before. I'm talking about countries like Canada, US, and everywhere else. And I know in, in, in Indonesia, Egypt, maybe sometimes you just place an order, they give you a delivery. So um, that's, that's what accelerated the digital transformation because companies started to invest in IT infrastructure, invested in remote working, invested in training people, and I believe it's going to stay. 
but the question is how long? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. That's not an easy uh, question to answer. But according to the survey, a lot of executives believe that this digital transformation will stay. I believe that you're still going to see people working from home now because people have accepted that uh, notion. Uh, I did not expect my son, for example, who is in grade one to be studying from home. Uh, now he is, I'm going to register him for virtual school for next year because we have accepted that, that change. So um, the point is that the COVID-19 has impacted, has changed the paradigm and, and the thinking of doing things outside of the box, uh, working from home, doing a different uh, business mode of, of, of the products. But how long is it going to stay? I, I don't know. I think some companies will capitalize on that. Some companies might might expand and some companies might go back to what they were before the COVID-19. It's quite um, difficult because like, as you said, uh, now we just like think out of the box. So yeah, we some services we really need like education, like maybe some restaurant or food industry now they do delivery and stuff. But you know, like it's quite a shame that some other industries shut down now because of the COVID-19 or uh, they have like many uh, branches and they have to close some of the branches because of the loss. So I know no one knows how it, how, or it's quite tricky to expect how long this will last. But in terms of like many variants now, we, we are getting like Indian and whatever. Yes. But I believe the investment it w will really increase in some point, but in other point will decrease as well. And um, it's just we, we will wait and see um, what will go on. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. And um... Like, like we stated, I mean, some organizations will flourish, will continue to expand, will, will take an advantage of the momentum of what's happening. Um, and just like you mentioned, it's a shame that some companies closed out and they went out of business because there's no innovation. There's no thinking outside of the box. What can we do to sustain our operations given the, the conditions, given the situation that we have? So um, if I, I strongly believe if organizations continue to rescale, upscale, continue with their innovative approaches, uh, entrepreneurship approaches, they, they, they will sustain, they will increase the digital uh, transformation, they will increase in investment in terms of digitalization. Um, others will, will either stagnate or go out of business. So that's, that's what is expected. Yeah, yeah, it's really good point. Thank you so much, Professor, or Dr. Amor. <laughs> Thank you for your question, shukran. Uh. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Embarika. Embarika, am I am it, uh, correct or not to pronounce your name? Seem to be like America, <laughs> but uh, Embarika. Um, thank you very much. This is kind of a challenge uh, to us that uh, the discussion of this kind of uh, uh, seminar should be like that. Any uh, uh, question and not only question, but also uh, sharing uh, some thought from, from you yourself. And actually, um, Prof. Amar, we have uh, two international students with us, actually. I don't know whether they are here or not. They are from Sudan and from Egypt as well. Uh, I don't know if uh, they are here or not. I cannot uh, identify because there's uh, uh, quite many participants here. If any question from other students, yeah, feel free. Even in Bahasa Indonesia, yeah, even in Bahasa Indonesia, or if you want to ask uh, in Arabic, we'll be also welcome because uh, 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 some of our students here, Prof. Amar, they, they mastering uh, Arabic as well because they are from Pesantren, uh, um, yeah, from uh, Islamic boarding, uh, boarding, boarding school. So feel free, yeah. Uh, Prof. Amar will be uh, more than happy to ask uh, to answer question, but we'll appreciate also if you have something, uh, give kind of a correction to Prof. Amar if any mistake that uh, he made or, or others. So, any other question? Bahasa Indonesia is okay too. Come on. <laughs> Uh, 
um, Bu Ayu, Mbak Ayu, um, our quiz, our student from from Sudan and from uh, Egypt is join with us or not? Cannot identify identify from the list. Again, yeah, question from others. Um, yeah, if not, uh, as what uh, Prof. Amar said, that uh, he will be more than happy to respond all the questions through uh, his email, that you can see his email on uh, his uh, curriculum vitae. Um, not only the topic that he shared, but also um, probably some uh, recipe how to be a good student, <laughs> how to be successful uh, um, career uh, uh, with with him because you can see from uh, his uh, curriculum vitae he already have uh, many kind of uh, experiences and. in uh, his career in Rwanda or first day at Universitas Muhammadiyah Jakarta want to do kind of a partnership with uh, his university there in Toronto. But sure. Toronto in, sure, is but. more in English or uh, France? But. English. Yeah, uh, Toronto is more yeah, English yeah, because we have yes. to know some part of uh, Canada like Quebec and so forth more you know, uh, speak uh, France than English, but Toronto is more English. But uh, very unique uh, Canada because they speak uh, dual language, yeah, Arabic, sorry, <laughs> English and, and uh, <laughs> France. <laughs> Any question? If not, I want to uh, conclude yeah, our discussion uh, uh, this morning. Sorry, this evening in a total time. I want to express our thanks at the late to Professor Amar. Uh, don't make any joke again yeah, about Amar Makruf and Mukar. <laughs> so tell that one is very good. More Amar rather than Mukar. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we 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 aware that uh, from his presentation, we know we then uh, open our mind that uh, the world is not small, not simple. To be frank, yeah, because it's quite complicated. But uh, with technology that he already shared, everything become simple. Everything become uh, easier to deal with. That's why to be a good entrepreneur. Do not forget about uh, uh, mastering the technology. Yeah? Yes, don't keep your technology with uh, old technology like uh, what uh, now become complicated. Yeah? For example, last time we have uh, 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 using what we call it, uh, the, the old version of uh, technology in the past. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think about uh, current technology will will also um, solve everything on your life. But right. uh, using uh, um, future technology, yeah, thinking about this time, yeah, using through not only for uh, spy, not only for uh, doing uh, war there, but also um, doing your business in. Uh, uh, agriculture, for example, this is also a thing that good for us to consider. But uh, yeah, the challenge from Professor Amar to, to us in, in this moment is uh, the success story of uh, his study, success story of uh, his uh, working, uh, his uh, job in the past and up until now, and variety of uh, uh, experience in many things that make him become uh, prominent figures at this moment in the university. So thank you very much, Prof. Amar. Um, you want to say something to conclude your uh, discussion, Pa? Yes, Pa. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Pa, uh, 
UD for your, your introduction, for having me over here. It's always a pleasure to always talk to you and to my Indonesians, uh, Indonesian friends as well. Um, just to elaborate on what you just said, life, life is all about experimenting. It's all about trying, never give up. Um, some, I'm, I'm assuming most of the audience are students. Uh, you can see from my experience, from Payuri's experience, we have gone through several stages in our life. I mean, whether you... Uh, get your dream job or not, you, you can actually go from one position to another to another. You just need to be optimistic. Um, you just need to believe in, in yourself. You need, you need to believe in what is, um, what is written for you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, just, just keep positive, stay positive. Um, don't, don't give up um, and, and believe in yourself um that's that's what i wanted to to conclude and in terms of what i shared in this presentation it's just one example of what is happening um and also if, if you have any questions about um my my journey my experience if you have any uh, questions or you want to have any advice feel free to reach out i i put my email you can also reach out through linkedin um i'm, I'm available um and at the end, again, I just want to say, Paiudi, thank you so much for this opportunity, and I'll be happy to uh, visit in the future. And take care. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Amar. Let's uh, conclude our discussion with this uh, specific, our favorite work, Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, Prof. Amar, uh, you may leave uh, this, this uh, forum uh, because I still want to talk with our uh, student and also um, Dr. Embarika, thank you very much for your uh, for coming and join with uh, us here in this uh, discussion. Uh, now I will uh, talk uh, with my student. <laughs> thank you very much, Prof. Right. Amar and uh, Dr. Embarika. Okay, nice to meet you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Payudi, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Just, just go easy on the students, Payudi, okay? <laughs> Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum salam.